In the news this week, yet another sector of the economy receives boost from world-famous Lagos traffic jam. Nigerians settle in to enjoy smooth economic sailing. A Lagosian reacts to increase in land use charge. And now, it's the other news. And here's your host, OK Bakasi. Yes, um, hello and welcome. Uh, if the other news was jollof rice, this show is the bottom pot. Almost burnt party rice, you know, you know that where all the ingredients go to converge. Yeah, this is the show. All right, uh, we have a sizzling package for you. Uh, my guest today is a pioneer figure in the Nigerian journalism, uh, a man who, over the course of his career, has been a reporter, an editor, and a publisher, the CEO of Encomium. Ladies and gentlemen, please a round of applause for Mr. Kule Bakare in the building. Yes, yes. Uh, later on on the show. Uh, Dan shows us why all the time he spends watching American crime films is not a waste. Uh, but first is the other news headlines. Chief of Army Staff Lieutenant General Boratai has announced that plans are on the way to turn the dreaded Sambisa forest to a tourist resort. Well, <laughs> from terrorist camp to tourist resort. <laughs> I wonder how they will advertise the place. Sambisa. Pay nothing to check in, but you pay a ransom to check out. I mean, check out. All right. Meanwhile, uh, in Imo State, two policemen on illegal duty have allegedly shot and injured two wedding guests. The two wedding guests were later visited by the policemen, who then pronounced them innocent victim and innocent victim. <laughs> well, uh, uh, the Court of Appeal sitting in Adoikiti has directed the freezing of Governor Ayodele Fayashe's account by the EFCC. Of course, uh, Governor Fayashe is not happy about this development. They can't continue with this rascality. That's why I've come here, and I'm not leaving this bank until they've given me a statement. Uh, if, only, if only one could unfreeze a bank account by blowing hot air. <laughs> Uh, meanwhile, Nigeria's main opposition party, the PDP, has announced plans to form a shadow cabinet ahead of 2019 elections. Wow, so these people who promised us light since 1999 are still casting shadows till now. <laughs> Nigeria, Asha, ghost workers, deceased board members, and now shadow cabinets. <laughs> I think we need deliverance. Well, in foreign news, a Filipino housemaid has had to undergo surgery after her Saudi Arabian madam forced her to drink bleach. Oh, wow, how about madam? Huh? You must be heartless. Your mind is too dark. Oh yeah, drink the remaining bleach and lighten up. <laughs> well, South African President uh, Cyril Ramaphosa recently cut short his London trip to attend to a crisis in his country's northwest province. Wow. So, true, true, an African president can cut short his London trip and return home to deal with pressing issues. Ha. If now our own now. If now our own now. Mm. Mm. Anyway. Um, in sports, Arsenal's manager, Asen Wenger, has said that the timing of his recently announced departure was not his decision. Uh, Arsenal fans have also reacted, saying the timing was not a decision either. If not, mm, mm. <laughs> well, you know what I mean if you're an Arsenal fan. My guest today has had an illustrious career. He's reported for a number of magazines before setting up his own platform. Today, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Incomium Magazine is one of the nation's top soft sales. Uh, join me as I welcome Mr. Kunle Bakere. We call him KB. <laughs> Yes, sir. Thank yes, sir. You. Thank you very You're welcome, much. boss. Thank you. You're Thank welcome, you. sir. Thank you. Yeah. Um, someone, uh, P. 
people say that you are a man who doesn't want to be celebrated. You just like to stay anonymous. Yeah, you don't like all the noise. Why, why so, sir? A journalist must be behind the camera, behind the scene. You know, the moment a journalist is celebrated and you enter the fray, it's, because, it's very difficult to do your job. You know, a lot of people make the mistake of thinking that uh, a celebrity journalist is supposed to be celebrated, so to speak, be in the thick of things. Yeah. But that removes a lot from what you're supposed to be doing. Anyway, uh, despite all your attempts to stay anonymous, uh, I must tell you that you're highly celebrated. We know you, at least those of us <laughs> we know you. All right, so celebrity journalism in Nigeria, is it a good or bad thing? Because, you know, people say that uh, sometimes we overhype and over-celebrate people who don't deserve being celebrated. So, No, th there, there, are, there are three categories, I mean, so to speak. Yeah. There are soft set journals, yeah. there are glosses that celebrates popular people, and there are celebrity, and there's celebrity journalism. Yes. You know, the soft set journals are magazines like Encomium, Yes mm -hmm. Magazine. Yeah. You know, they cover the softer sides of life. You know, interview celebrities, human interest stories, and the rest of it. The glosses are the ones that uh, cover events like Ovation. Then the celebrity journal itself are magazines like Elo, like Encomium Special. You know, so they're, 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 it depends on the way. The, the way, okay. You know, okay, kind of. fine. Uh, with the emergence of uh, s uh, bloggers and social media, what is the future of Soft Cell Magazine? What's the future of journalism? That's what you should talk about. It's yeah. not only... So I'm asking so, you. <laughs> what's the future? It's, um, <laughs> it's very difficult to predict. Um, one, people must read about events around them. They must seek news, entertain themselves. But on what platform will they read those things? Will they view those things? That has changed. You know, everybody carries a phone about, you know, that's where they read news now and watch all the videos they want to watch. So th that's, that has disrupted the traditional way, I mean, of reporting events and covering events. Um, so in that sense, it has, what's the future? The future is difficult, to, you know why it's difficult to predict the future? I always tell people, in the last few years, war reporters are dwindling because it's difficult to pay people that report wars. If journals don't sell, who will report the news? You know, one of the major problems we have is that once a traditional media publishes something, everybody copies it and yeah, copy and paste and pastes, yeah. and it's all over the place. Yeah. And meanwhile, that traditional media pays a lot to have these things covered. So if you, if you see traditional media, they are they are reducing star strength. So eventually, the quality of reporting is going to reduce. If yeah. Because nobody goes to the field anymore. No, who will pay for but going again, to the field? That is why some news outlets have eye reporters, eyewitness. They now it's not the same. It's not the same. I you mean, have to be trained. If, if 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 something is happening in, um, say, Kaduna now, instead of a media house sending a reporter to go, probably do a professional job, you rely on eyewitness accounts of people who are there. Who will send the, you the, rumors? The, the, the disadvantage is. You know, think if something is happening in Sambisa, for example, there may be no eyewitness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. That's true. All right, we will take a break. We'll take a break, uh, and we'll see what has been troubling Dan the Humorous recently. Uh, we'll be back. Just don't even go away because this conversation is getting exciting. It's still the other news. Yeah, you're welcome back. It's still the other news. And I'm having a fascinating conversation with the CEO of Encomium, uh, Kule Bakari. Um, sir, yes. yes, you've covered the entertainment industry extensively over the years. Um, you've seen the industry metamorphose. What is your take? Is the industry growing in the right direction? It's growing, but probably not in the right direction. But it will grow in the right direction in the nearest future. You know, things always work out. Yeah. Um, now, the artists are making a lot of money, but there are no, there's no structure. The structure will come in no time. I mean, 
is the way of the is the way things work out. So for now, the industry is uh, all money and no structure. Yeah, but the structure will come. Yes, journalists. Do you think they have really contributed their quota in 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 being the watchdog watchdog of society? You know, seeing how how poor the reportage of things happening in the country has become. You know, people say journalists have become more of uh, brown envelope seekers and uh, press release carriers. Yeah. Is that true? Is there any truth in that? To a large extent, it is. Wow. It's a reflection of what's happening in the country. For example, let's take a media house that has not paid salary for seven months. How do you expect their staffers to survive if they don't collect brown envelopes? You know, there's a Yoruba proverb that if somebody is in a precarious and difficult situation, he's most likely to commit a crime. So yeah, the, it's, it's common sense. <laughs> it's that common is why, sense. you know, when people say they are fighting corruption and people are hungry, that means it won't work. It's difficult. It's difficult. We're in trouble. Big trouble. Big trouble. So what's the way out, really? So what is the way out? If we all agree that we are in trouble as a journalist... The way out is for people that are really concerned about Nigeria to put themselves forward and change Nigeria. There are a lot of people that can do things, but they don't want to. They say politics is dirty, and they don't want to get involved. See the change they promised. Is that what we have? Actually, it's, it's, it's change. But the thing is, is, is the change from good to better or better to worse? Majority of the people in APC are from PDP. Yeah. They just change names. Name, they are yeah. the same. Yeah, they are the same. It's so difficult. There's, there, there's little or no change. There, there's change. Change in name. <laughs> not, yeah. not change in ideology or at any all, philosophy. At all. And they fight for their interest. If you see people fighting, they are sharing money somewhere. Yes. And once they are quiet, the money is going around. It's going around. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're in trouble. So, you know, looking at this country, like the way... You know, we have all gone now. We are looking for messiahs. The country is in need of people who can stand up and help. Are you one of those people I who are willing to say, look, let's get this thing done? I've always been, but we're in a minority. A lot of people don't want change, you know. I, I always set an example. In my office, if somebody steals, all of them will connive to protect the, people, the person that has stolen that's what happens everywhere. It's difficult to stand the rights by yourself. Everybody is conniving to... If somebody does a bad thing, everybody rallies, rallies around to ensure that the person is protected. We can't we can move forward. It's mm. very, very difficult. So it's... But uh, it can be done. You see, what I tell people is, things will get bad, but we don't know how bad it will get, but it will get better. Ah. Oh. I, I, you know, it's a scary thought to think that things will permit me to say better than this. <laughs> because worse is to say things will get worse. I think it's already worse. No, at the height of, at the height of, like better, you know, it's 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 scary. At the height of Jonathan's uh, despicable reign, to, so to speak, people yeah. thought that was the end. That things yeah. can get worse. Yes, it's gotten worse. It's going to get. Do you know? <laughs> It's difficult to contemplate how things will be, you know, very, very difficult. So is there politics in your future? Maybe activism. Not activism, maybe yeah. not politics. I mean, but, I mean, we have to get involved one way or the other. I'm older now. I, yeah. I wish I had done things maybe when I was 30 years younger, you know. Things, things have to change. We can't Once there's life, there's time. Yeah. Thank you so very much for making our time to talk with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, um, President Buhari drew the anger of uh, Nigerian youth when he made this statement at the recent Commonwealth uh, Business Forum in London. We have uh, a very young population. Our population is estimated conservatively to be uh, 180 million. Uh, this is a conservative one. More than 60% of the population is below the age of, six, uh, of 30. Uh, a lot of them haven't been to school, and uh, they are claiming uh, 
uh, you know that Nigeria has been an oil producing country, therefore uh, they should sit and do nothing and uh, get housing, health care, uh, education free. But I think we need to cut the president some slack. I understand what he means. Uh, the president was not talking about all Nigerian youth. I think he was talking about those lazy Nigerian youths on Big Brother Niger. <laughs> yeah, after all, where else will Nigerian youths get free accommodation and the opportunity to comfortably sit around and do nothing and get sharks, snacks, and knacks for free? And then the youths on the outside, we are busy cheering them on, hailing them. Yeah, why wouldn't an elderly person now think that all of you are lazy? <laughs> you go blame them. But come to think of it, was the president wrong? Are Nigerian youth not lazy? I, I, and before you rise up from your slumber and attack me with your lazy insults, <laughs> yeah, dear Nigerian youth, please, use your church mind and ask yourself, how many times you know, has your father shouted on you, you lazy idiot? <laughs> Yes, you can go ahead and count. I'll wait. Now, speaking of fathers, even the area father himself, Charlie Boy, came on this show and said as much about some Nigerian youth. When I created the Charlie Boy brand, yeah. it was supposed to shock, timid, myopic, last year, Mongo, Pakish, Nigeria. You see what I mean? Now, some of the president's political rivals, like Atiku Abubakar, jumped at the opportunity to throw shit at the 75-year-old industrious Nigerian non-youth. <laughs> Atiku was quoted as saying, I'm not surprised with the fellow who made that remark because he's not an employer of labor, he has no business, he has no educational institution, so he doesn't relate with youth in schools. So I don't blame him. <laughs> Ouch. This Atiku Shah, you have bad mouth. <laughs> well, the truth is that Nigeria is a big and diverse country. We have the good, the bad, and the lazy. Most Nigerian youth are smart, innovative, diligent, and hardworking. Some are so lazy, you will start to wonder if it is blood or codeine that is flowing through their veins. <laughs> you see, if someone wants to work and can't find any job, it does not mean he is lazy. It simply means that his leaders have been too lazy to do their job. And if lazy leaders keep getting into office, it means that the youth of this country have been too lazy to participate in the political system in a way that puts them in a driving seat to choose better leaders. Maybe the president was not insulting the youth. Maybe he was just trying to get you all woke. President Buhari, I see you. I see you. I see you. I see what you did there. Yeah, nice one. All right, Nigerian youth. Not you. Welcome back. It's the other news. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, as the drama surrounding the arrest of Senator Dino Milaye continues to unfold, Nigerians continue to observe in the hopes of understanding. One issue that caught our eye at the other news was the story of the distinguished senator allegedly escaping police custody by jumping out of a vehicle. Well, for more on this, we turn now to our senior crime scene and forensic correspondent, Dandy Humans. Now, when Senator Dino Milaro was arrested, he believed he was going to go to an Abuja based facility, which, by the way, he has been preparing for months. I was already prepared to go to prison. I have my tissue paper, <laughs> I have my you know, toothpaste, I have my brush. Now, Senator Dino did not tell us that inside that bag he had a compass. And that compass was what showed him the way to know that, hey, this bus is beginning to change course and is moving towards Lokoja. And with his safety concerns in Kogi State, he remembered his famous quote. You speak the truth, you die. You lie, you die. I, Dino Melaye, have chosen to speak the truth and die. So he said to himself, if I jump, I die. If I don't jump and reach this Lokoja, I still die. 
So I didn't know will jump and die. Fortunately, he jumped and didn't die. Now, what got our attention here at the other news is how did the Ajeko Yanoja Kruna jump out of that vehicle? So we are going to go into an on-the-spot forensic analysis. Now, from the videos we see, Senator Dino was weeks away in a Toyota Hiax 14-seater bus such as this. Now, you will know for sure that he will be sitting anywhere from this seat to the back. And this front seat will always be manned by an armed officer. Now, how possible was it for him to go through this armed officer here and then unfasten the secure button here to jet, jump out of the bus. Now, they, they say that he fled through the window or he jumped the window of the bus. Now, this is it. This is the window of the bus. Now, how did he escape whoever will be sitting here to bring out his head and his shoulder to jump out of this bus while it's in motion? And you have seen his shoulder. It's probably his leg to his waist can pass, but his shoulder to his mid region. Somehow. Now, the police also reportedly say that two Hilux vans double crossed this vehicle. So, is it that when they double crossed the vehicle, the, all the policemen in this bus all came down? to fight Hilux, leaving their detainee alone. The only explanation to this is that Senator Dino, realizing that he was on his road to Damascus, went into praise and worship. Do you know, T.Y.B. And from that praise and worship, it graduated to the point where police might have been thinking that, ah, this guy don't enter seizure. And then the must have said, Oga, come down, come take breeze. Looks like the only explanation to that. That makes sense. We are also lost on the timeline of events between that sitting position to when he was in this stretcher position. Could it be when the police said, get into this bus? He said, no, I prefer another means of transportation. By the way, where did the ambulance come from? How did the ambulance leave that scene to the hospital? Another report said he ran into the bush and from the bush, he ran to the hospital. Are you trying to say that a man disendowed outrun our own Nigerian SWAT. <laughs> Indeed, in this matter, there are more questions than answers. And if somebody does not start telling us something now, we will suspect that there's more in hand in this soup. So if you're out there and you really know the truth, come forward and say it. You will not die. From the other news, Command Center for Investigation and Forensics, I am Dan the Humorous. And remember, you didn't hear this from me. Yeah. Than the humorous, ladies and gentlemen. Well, and with that, uh, we've regretfully come to the end of today's show. Thank you for letting us invade your home today. Uh, if you want more jokes, old episodes, and exclusive content, look us up on social media. Our handle remains the other new CTV across all platforms. And if you'd like to join us live on stage, call the numbers on your screen. Remember, car away the rush, go America. Go come back as come be. <laughs> My name is OK. 